What is up fellow bushcrafters? You asked for it after the last video of carving a spatula. Spoon carving, that's what we're getting after today. So let's get started. For our spoon, I harvested a piece of birch not too far from here. So this is green wood. That is gonna make life much easier. Next step in any carving is to make dimensional lumber. So I'm gonna take this piece, cut it to length, carve it down so I have a nice piece of dimensional lumber to start with. My dimensional lumber is now created. We're gonna work from this point forward to create our spoon. On a side note, we're coming out here to enjoy ourselves. So anytime you're gonna do any type of carving, it's not an emergency type situation that we need to get this done quick. It should be enjoyable and offer enjoyment to you while you're out here. So find a nice spot, get comfortable, be relaxed, settle in and take your time. Your end product is gonna come out way better and it just feeds into the whole bushcraft lifestyle. Being that everything's wet out here, I can give you guys one quick tip. I brought a backpack today with all my equipment in to do this, but if I sit or kneel anywhere, I'm gonna get soaking wet. So I always make sure I bring my cold cracker bushcraft haversack along with me. Even if I'm not using it, it's light, it's very packable and it's oil cloth. So I can throw this on top of a log and sit on it. I could throw it down and kneel on it and it offers me some protection from the element, so it's a great piece of kit. Yeah, that was like a plug for my website and some of my products. Um, head over to coldcrackerbushcraft.com. After years of bushcrafting and tons of spoons that just did not come out right, I learned one thing, and that is to cut the bowl, the curved part of the spoon, first and then carve around that rather than cutting the shape of the spoon out and then going back with your hook knife and trying to get that bowl you know that area in the spoon that's going to catch the liquid cut the bowl first then carve the spoon it just makes life easier for the beginner so that's what i'm going to do take my hook knife whatever style hook knife you have and begin to work that now if you look at a spoon at home one thing you're going to realize is that bowl in the spoon is not really deep and that's a big mistake that beginners make they carve it way too deep we're not making a ladle we're making a spoon so it's only going to be a few passes with our hook knife is going to have that concave shape that we need and then we are good to go we can start the rough cutting and carving of the spoon shape when carving the bowl of a spoon and using a hook knife one thing that you want to remember is that you want to cut across the grain. You don't want to cut with the grain, you want to cut across the grain. So the grain is running from this location back, so I'm going to put my knife this way and I'm going to carve in. Nice and light, you guys don't have to push real hard. You're only removing small amount of material when you do this and working around the bowl of your spoon. So if I need to get into this region in here, all I'm going to do is take my knife and very slowly work that small little chips again rotating the piece of wood and cutting across the grain is going to give you most success with any kind of hook knife you can see we're not too deep at all there i'm going to go a little bit more and clean that up finalize it and then we will be finished up with the bowl see that beautiful spoon that we now created spoon bowl now what we're going to do is cut out the rest, rough cut. You can see here I have drawn a handle. So while I was carving this, I thought I'm going to add the handle shape on and see if we can get somewhere close to this. So it's going to be a larger spoon, shorter handle. It's going to look really, really great. Now time for the rough cut. I'm going to begin my rough cutting. At this point, I'm going to look where the bowl of my spoon is and I'm going to use the same technique as with the spatula. I'm going to cut in and swipe down. That way we have no chance of splitting out the bowl of our spoon. Next thing I wanna share with everybody is you could see the design of that spoon handle that I'm actually going for. What that's gonna mean is that I need to do a little bit different technique when cutting. I can't cut like I would normally just dig in here and swipe down because what's gonna happen is the point right where my finger's at is a lot higher 
than this point. So if I would dig in all the way down to this line and cut, I'm gonna cut part of my spoon off. So how we're gonna combat that is we're gonna make small cuts about halfway. I'm just coming in down to that low point and I'm not pushing any further. I'm then gonna rotate the wood and I'm going to cut down and break them pieces out. So I'm gonna cut in, come from the other side and cut down, removing those pieces. One trick when roughing out our blank is to look at the lumber dimensionally. Don't keep looking at it at all different angles. What I wanna do initially is get this shape. So all that I'm gonna do is stare at it just like this, the same way you're staring at it now. I wanna look there and get the shape. If, the, if it's thick and you look at it, it might bell out towards the bottom. So that's something we're gonna to have to deal with. But if we keep looking at that shape and get the initial shape at this angle, then we can turn it this way and get the shape that way, turn it, get the shape this way. So look at it that way. That made my life a lot easier. That's something I do. I don't know if everybody else does it, but that's what I do when I'm carving and it makes it just that much easier for me to wrap my head around why I'm cutting and where I should be cutting. I have the back section of my spoon now carved out. I changed this back design a little bit. I might go back and touch this up, but for now, the rough cut of the handle is really where I want it. What we're gonna work on next now is cutting the top off of this. Again, looking at it just one dimensional. How we go about cutting this top edge off is the same as cutting the curves down in here on our spoon blank. The grain runs this way, that direction. So I'm gonna start down at the bottom and I'm gonna make a cut just like this. All right, now I can make another cut a little bit higher up and that is gonna bring me in a little bit closer. I can't work down this way because I will split it out. So I'm gonna just take another cut up in this direction and I'm gonna just follow this line. A key to making a nice looking spoon is a very thin rim on it. So I'm gonna look here cut upward. Now it's still thick, but that isn't gonna hurt anything. I'm gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna keep working up along that edge. And now I'm working all the way back to try to get it more symmetrical, but I'm just rough cutting for now. Make another cut here, another cut here. See how that is really quickly coming out the way it needs to be. Very easy. Now I'm gonna turn to this side and work this side out. And that's it, our spoon blank is really cut at this point. Now it looks a little bizarre because it is just big and bulky, especially this way. We're gonna trim all that out and that's really gonna bring the design together. So the next thing that we wanna do, and I already jumped the gun a little bit, is start to carve the back section of our spoon out. Same technique as cutting these shoulders. It's all really the same technique, it's just different applications to it. So looking at the bowl of our spoon, about an eighth of an inch in, we bring it over and that's where we wanna start that back sweeping cut. So hold it this way. Again, I'm just gonna start at this back section and make that sweeping cut to start to remove some material. Now you can see I'm using the tip of my knife to do this. All that I'm doing is chipping away. So a chipping cut is just cutting small chips like this away compared to a deep slicing cut. So we get that stuff piled up on the end, not a problem, just come in on this side and take little sections. You can always take wood away, you can never add it back on once it's cut off. And that's really where people make their biggest mistake. Just take your time, this is a relaxing, think what you're doing type of thing. So that's what we're gonna work on. So I'm gonna work on this back section now, and then I'm gonna jump forward and begin to work on flattening out because we don't need something this thick. How we do that is very simple also. We're going to start at the tip of the spoon, not at the back, at the tip, and remove some material. So I'm just gonna make nice big long slices along the front of this spoon. See, I'm starting to thin that out. What this does now is think about the grain direction. The grain's running this direction, all right? So as I cut here, watch what happens. It comes off. So I can cut back now 
without any possibility of splitting further up ahead. So I'm just gonna work up this way. Once I get that a little bit thinned out, I'm gonna come back a little bit further. See what that's starting to look like. Now I'm gonna come back a little bit further. to work it that way. This is giving us the most control when we do this without making a mistake. Roughing out our spoon is now complete. This might be a little bit further than most people would consider roughing something out because this is actually usable at this point. But for me, I really wanna just touch this up. It's that fine detail work that really separates a good carving from a not so good carving. Gonna take time. This is the tedious work. You wanna sit and just take your time adjust those angles, thin things out, make your slopes more even, make the spoon a little bit more even, but overall, it's coming along really, really nice. At this point, the carving process is really where we're looking at all the dimensions and making sure everything looks good. And as you look at it, you come in here and just make your fine adjustments. You'll see if something looks out of place, go in and fix it. Every angle, you should try to have as much symmetry around the piece as you can. And even those little humps or bumps that are sticking up, get rid of them, chip them away, take your time with it because that is really what's gonna separate your carving and make it all that better. That's it, close to finish, just a little bit more finishing work and I think it's gonna be right where I want it. With any carving, it comes down to understanding the grain. We talked about that in the spatula video, I talked about it in this video, reading the grain, feeling the tool into that wood and letting the wood tell you what it's gonna do. And that's really what is separating someone who's just starting to a very advanced carver. They just understand that wood grain and how to cut and get better symmetry with their pieces. But this is doable for anybody. The more you do it, the better you become. It's like anything. So give it a shot, see how it comes out. You might mess a couple up, but that's all part of the game. So this was Dan Wallach with Coal Cracker Bushcraft. I hope you enjoyed this spoon making video. I like to come out and take my time and do this once in a while. I don't do it all as much as I should, but I do understand the concepts and that's really what matters to me at the end of the day that I know how to do these things and I get to be outside and enjoy myself. So as always, if you haven't already, check us out over at coalcrackerbushcraft.com and until the next video, stay in the woods guys.